Women Taking the Lead, episode 128. Well, I think uh, when we try to be a good leader for me, it's just constantly understand people's pain. Because I think if we are able to really understand the uh, the pain they're going through, and I, for me, uh, there's a lot of time because I work a lot with uh, female entrepreneurs, is the fear. Where does the fear come from? And if we could really address that, I think people's potentials are limitless. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentl.com forward slash recognize to reserve your spot in our upcoming webinar on how to be recognized and rewarded for the work you do. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm here with Melinda Chen, who is a sales coach helping female entrepreneurs sell to big clients. She is also a sales executive with an impressive sales track record of eight figures. Her company, Women Making Big Sales, allows female entrepreneurs to start connecting and sell to big clients in five weeks. When she first started her sales career after university, she wanted to know everything about selling. So she spent years reading over 20 books in sales made over 5,000 cold calls, and worked with agents, reps, and corporate clients around the world. Since then, she has mastered the art of selling to big companies and made sales in the Americas, Europe, and Asia, covering a wide range of industries. She is inspired to help women take control of their lives by going for big clients, closing important deals, and dramatically expanding their business. Melinda, I'm excited to have you on Women Taking the Lead because I think sales is definitely an area where women start to cringe (laughs) when they have to talk about it. But before we get into all that, that intro was just to introduce everyone to you. So tell us a little bit more about you and your own humble beginnings. Yes. Hi, Jody. I'm excited to be here. Uh, Yeah, this is my, my name is Melinda, founder of Women Making Big Sales. And uh, I've actually started uh, kind of being in sales since I was 15. Um, I was born into a very entrepreneurial family. And uh, my parents, um, they own business. They still own it now. And they're Taiwanese, so they didn't know how to speak English. So by the time I was 15, my English was getting good enough. So they figured, okay, well, they could take me to to trade shows and uh, be the translator for their business. That's when I really got into trade shows and I could feel the energy in business. And I love business. And that's also the reason why I started really feel and understand the power of selling. I would see my father, I mean, the person I admire the most, trying to get clients and trying to get into very important buyers. We would wait outside at the booth and hoping that the buyer would just talk to us. And that was a really, really true experience for me to, to understand how important sales is for, for anybody. I believe it's not just for business owners, but for professionals. It's all about how you present yourself. So um, that was when I was 15, but then I went into university and I studied business. And when I graduated from, um, from university, I became, I got a job as international sales manager for one company, started selling to agents around the world. And that's how I started my sales career. I continued to go into different companies, always in sales, uh, um, sales related positions. And finally, I started coaching for other people just because of people I know through my network. They knew uh, my work and they asked me to consult for them. And finally, um, last year, 2015, I started Women Making Big Sales and helping female entrepreneurs sell to hard to get clients. Amazing. I can just hear that, that, um, you know, just through your own life experience, it kind of pulled back the curtain on the mystery of sales for you. Like it's not this murky, scary area where you might make the sale, you might make not you, you have a knowledge of, you know, what to listen for, what to look for and how to help people. Yes, exactly. I think uh, a lot of people, when uh, you mentioned it before, you know, I've read a lot of books and that's really when I realized, wow, sales, it's not, it's not like, you know, when people say, oh, I'm, I'm just not good at selling. I'm just not a great salesperson. It's actually a step by step, step process. um, And it can be learned. And especially I think women were great at it because we're, we're naturally very great listener. We're great collaborator. 
And that's usually a very important skill for salespeople. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And clearly, Melinda, you've had success in your life. You have this confidence, especially around sales. Mm -hmm. But take us back to a time when you were playing small, where you didn't realize how capable you were. It was probably only in retrospect. You looked back and thought, my goodness, why did I you know, sell myself so short at that time? Mm -hmm. Share with us the story and the lessons you've learned. Yes. Uh, when I started selling, I actually was not good at selling at all. Um, I, I I went through a lot of struggle. And I remember um, people told me I was trying to find clients, especially as international sales, um, sales uh, manager at my first job. All the people I was working with, either my competitors or the agents that I was trying to sell to, they had a lot, a lot of experience. Some of them had 20 years of experience in the industry. So me, freshly off college, I started trying to connect with these people. I'd go to networking events, which, you know, it's just a natural thing to do when you started selling. But when I went to the networking event, and I really remember the first networking event I went to, I was really nervous. It took me hours to find that perfect outfit. I was trying to look a bit older than I was, and I was practicing my value proposition. I even wrote down a couple of uh, topics to talk about, like a little small talk that I could talk about in case I got too nervous. So I finally got to those events and I got to the event. Then I would see my direct competitors connecting with the agents, basically my clients. And they would talk, they would laugh. They, they feel like it felt like they, they, they had known each other for a long time. And of course, that's what happened. You know, they've, um, all of them had been in the industry for a long time. So you know, I feel like, I feel like, wow, I really did not belong in this room. And everybody seemed to know each other except me. And me just, I, you know, nobody really, people were trying to talk to me, but nobody was really engaged uh, in the conversation because I was so nervous about how I'd look. I was so nervous about the fa fact that I was the new kid there, that I didn't really pay much attention in terms of the personal conversation I was having or the conversation I was having with the person right in front of me. And then afterwards, um, that it was a disastrous experience. I went back and I like I was crying. I felt really, really, I, I felt small. I felt inexperienced, defeated. And uh, I couldn't believe how, I couldn't imagine myself selling to these people. And as a result, instead of saying, oh, I'm just going to go to the next networking event, I started doing calls. And that's the reason why I made so many cold calls. It's because I got scared of going to those networking events again. I'm like, oh, there's no way I'm going to those events. There's no way I'd make any sales in those events. But now looking back, and I have been gone through so many different industries and 15 years in sales, I knew that it was only natural that people would treat me as the new kid because I was the new kid. And I knew that, like, I didn't have to take things so personally. And, you know, people were, I think, especially women, we sometimes get really sensitive in terms of um, what happens around us. And uh, my experience, that working experience at that time, it wasn't because I was, um, I was not knowledgeable enough about my product, but it was simply because I was a new person. And I just, it just simply needed time to integrate into the industry and in, with the people I knew. So that was, I think that was really my plain small moment and uh, that transition to a lot of cold calls. <laughs> And a lot of lessons there. So two things from what you said. You were the first person I've ever heard say, I took on cold calling yeah, so I, I could avoid networking. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I always, people are always am, you know, amazed by the fact that I've done so many cold calls, but I like to share the story that the reason why I got so many cold, I did so many cold calls because I was afraid of doing much networking. Oh my gosh, Melinda, I'm going to share this with everybody I know. That is hilarious. And like, it really speaks to yeah. how awful that first experience networking was for you. It was so bad. Yeah. It drove you to cold calling exactly. as an alternative. <laughs> which is still making me chuckle. And two, taking things personally, right? When we make what happens around us mean more yeah. than, it, than it actually means. Other than, you know, I, I love that, that you shared that specifically, that you were taking it personally. You were new, you mm -hmm. were young, 
there's nothing, you know, so of course they were going to wait and see, yeah. you know, if you were going to, you know, uh, stay in the game. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And then, and, I mean, a lot of times we, everything takes time. And I think especially today's age and back then I was young. So I was looking for that instant gratification. I was hoping to close some sales at during my first networking event. <laughs> and mm -hmm. now looking back, I knew, uh, I know that it's, it's not how it works. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm, I'm like practically crying. Oh, yeah, that was so funny. Oh, awful. What an awful experience. But just the perspective of that. Oh, man. Yeah. All right, Melinda, now share with us a time in your journey when you had a wake up call. Take us back to that moment and share with us the steps that you took that led to your success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think um, afterwards, shortly afterwards, I was still struggling with sales. And uh, I continued to doing my cold calls, but I wasn't getting much success from that. I got some clients, but they're all very small clients. And uh, I never really were able to really reach my sales goals. And it was probably because of the, all the cold calls I was doing. I was queen of cold calls in the office. Everybody knew that I was doing lots of calls. I was working hard, but uh, they all knew that uh, I was struggling a little bit. Finally, one, I remember specifically one night, it was rainy, it was dark, and uh, I was just packing up to ready to go home. And uh, one uh, very senior sales executive, he passed by, he, he, was, he just happened to be in the office. Normally, he'd be in golf course, um, but he was in the office, and he started asking me how I was doing, how the business was going. I started telling him about the struggles I was facing. Then he asked me, so how long does it take to get, into, to get your, your clients? I mean, they seem small clients. Then I went through the whole process of getting my clients. And then he told me that, do you know how long it takes me to get big clients? It's about the same time. Then he went through the same process. You still meet with the clients, take them through the sales process, and trying to close the sales. And he said, why are you spending your time, wasting your time, working on small clients instead of going after big clients. And I couldn't believe that it actually took him exact same process selling to big clients as, uh, and uh, compared to my, me selling to small clients. And I look at his number and he didn't have a big number of big clients, a large number of clients he worked with, but simply because of the fact that these are the big clients he was able to really, really enjoy a lot of time, his time going to golf course and playing golf rather than, rather than sitting in the office and doing tons of cold calls until 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Then I, was, I couldn't believe it, and, uh, and that's when I really decided, okay, I am going to go after big clients. But at the same time, it was still a very nerve-wracking experience. I mean, I was thinking about, wow, the fact that I have to sell to president of the company or uh, VP of a certain uh, vice president of a big corporation, it was still a taunting experience. But I decided, somebody told me, just screw it, just do it. <laughs> and then I said, okay, well, I guess if I'm going to do cold calls, I might as well cold call really big clients. And I wasn't getting much, re uh, much response at the beginning. But after making cold calls for like 100 cold calls to really big executives, I no longer feel the fear. And then that's when I really started knowing and listening to what these people are talking, listening to the words they use and listening to uh, the problems they had. And I started to be able to really offer things that are relevant to these people, to these big clients. And at the same time, I no longer fear selling to big clients. And most importantly, I don't fear selling to small clients either because after all, I've already called so many presidents of a so-and-so. So even smaller clients, I felt extremely comfortable talking to them. And because of the fact that I just screw it, just do it, I actually got better and better at it just by practicing it. And that was really for me to really realize that a lot of times we think a lot and we think of what we're going to say, we think of the strategies, we think of um, different kinds of theories, but sometimes, you know, we just got to screw it and do it and learn mm -hmm. as we do it. And uh, that's really transformed my business. 
I love that. I really do appreciate that Richard Branson quote, screw it, just do it, because that is, you're exactly right. That's the reality. Oftentimes, it doesn't matter how long we research something or we train in hypotheticals until you get out there and start doing it and be willing to be not good at it at first, right? To be bad at something. Yeah. But until you actually start doing it for real and gain experience and feedback, that's when you get better. Yeah. And the fear, I mean, fear is such an important topic. And uh, if we don't do it, it's like fear is like going into a dark room. If we've never experienced something, if we don't know what to expect, if we we don't know what's going to be in there, or the process, then obviously we would have the fear. But the moment we've done it, we've seen it, we've uh, gone through it, the fear would naturally slowly um, disappear. Right. And, you know, I also wanted to underscore, because what you were pointing to was a couple of different things that the more you did it, the more you approached these bigger companies, the more comfortable you got with it and the fear went away. And what I heard in that was you were also able to be yourself more. Yes. And be more more relaxed, which probably put the other people you were interacting with, the presidents of these companies, more at ease because they didn't feel like they were getting pitched. They just felt like they were having a conversation with you because you weren't so stressed out about it. And that... um, and, and that's the key right there, too, is that, yes, these people have important roles and they do expect a certain level of professionalism. Mm-hmm. But at the heart of it is they're people, too, yeah. and they want to have a real human interaction with somebody. Exactly. And then at the end, people are just trying to find uh, solutions that could solve their pains and uh, go back to not taking things personally and, uh, you know, as long as we humanize the process, especially the big S word, you know, instead of treating it as I'm selling, um, I'm selling my service or product to somebody else, treat it as a partnership. Let's try to brainstorm. Let's try to find ways to collaborate, to, to work with each other. If we don't, that means that um, it might not be the best fit at that moment, but uh, we can just harmonize this, uh, this, this relationship and treat it as, uh, as a collaboration. Perfect. Right there. Partnership and collaboration. That's what really is at the heart of sales. Mm -hmm. Love it. And Melinda, what I want everyone to get is there's no one way to lead because we all have different backgrounds. We have different strengths and perspectives. We're all different and we're all going to have a different style when it comes to leading. So Melinda, how would you describe your leadership style? Yeah, I I work a lot with uh, female entrepreneurs and show them how to sell. And at the same time, when I serve my clients, if I'm trying to sell something to somebody, I always believe in leadership and uh, leading my clients towards the end of uh, their goals. And my leadership skills is show, don't tell. Every time if I have something to say, I continue to ask myself, can I just show and demonstrate instead of just telling people? And for me, uh, it's maybe it's in my family background. My parents believe strongly about show, don't tell. That I always, uh, I always believe in demonstrate, uh, show people what we I've gone through and uh, how I solve it instead of just telling them the theory. And that's why I talk a lot about my sales failure and sales success. But my failure, I, because I want to show people that I have gone through it. And that it's okay to go through the same experience I went went through and it's completely normal. But you will get better just like I got better. So, um, yeah, I think my style is really just constantly tell myself, is there anything that I show more? I can demonstrate my value more instead of saying it or telling people about it. What can I do to really demonstrate my value um, for for my network, for, for my friends and uh, for my clients? I love that. And Melinda, what is the biggest leadership or business challenge you're faced with right now? Um, I think scalability. I think right now for me is uh, because I am still a sales executive. I continue. I believe in continue being that doing it to really know how uh, how to sell well. So I'm still uh, I still a sales executive for company and at the same time I train I um, I train or I show female entrepreneurs how to sell to big clients. And I'm also a mother of two boys, so I'm constantly trying to find ways to really scale my business and still at the same time make sure that my clients feel that I'm personally serving them um, but still using technology and uh, different ways to scale this business. 
Right. And I know there might be some people because scalability was a term that I was introduced to maybe four or five years ago. Yeah. Um, so for those listening, if you have not heard scalability before, it really is the ability to grow without having to use more resources. So yeah. to grow in the way without tapping yourself out. Exactly. Yeah. Grow away. Um, well, that's exactly the right uh, right definition of it. And I'm still trying to find the best way to do it. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, it's getting there. I'm, I'm trying to systemize my business so that, uh, um, I can serve more people. I love that. And now on the flip side of that, what is something you're working on right now that you're really excited about? Um, I am very excited about, uh, my program called heart of sales. And it's basically, um, five week program that I show people step by step process of getting our selling to hard to reach clients. And again, it goes back to a lot of my beliefs that um, sales can be learned. And it's actually very, there's a very clear process to it. And people just need to take that tools. And it's not necessary to sell to big clients. Um, there's a lot of different occasions when we have to, to try to sell our business to media, to investors, to, um, to, to other, other different, uh, different menus. So it's really... Um, showing people how to reach those hard to get influencers. I love that. And will they be able to, I know we're going to um, share your link to your website um, at the end of the episode, but will they be able to find this program on your website? Uh, they can find this program on my website. And I also have a webinar that really talks about three fundamental strategies or principles when it comes to selling to big clients. And I would really strongly recommend people just take check that out and just get a get an idea of what basic principles are. And uh, if they have more questions or they, if they want to brainstorm, they are always welcome to connect with me offline. Awesome. Okay, Melinda, now I'm going to do a quick leadership roundup. So tell us, what is one practice you have that helps to make you a better leader? Listen or empathy. Empathy. Say more about that. Yeah, well, I think uh, when we try to be a good leader, for me, is just constantly understand people's pain. Because I think if we are able to really understand the uh, the pain they're going through, and I, for me, uh, there's a lot of time because I work a lot with uh, female entrepreneurs, is the fear. Where does the fear come from? And if we could really address that, I think people's potentials are, potentials are limitless. But um, to really feel, uh, for me, is to understand their fear instead of, you know, dismissing it. I was like, ah, oh, you know, you should get over it. I think it's mm -hmm. to really address the, the fear people often have when they are facing a challenge. And, uh, and uh, once we're able to bring that, uh, to solve that problem, then we are able to take their dream to the next level. So for me, it's to, to really feel their fear and listen to those fears. Mm. And what is one book that you would recommend to a woman to help her develop her leadership? How to, how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a really classic book. I've read a lot of books and this book was published many, many years ago, but uh, I think it is a fundamental, um, it's, it's a classic, uh, for anybody, um, in terms of human relationship. And I, I love a quote when somebody, well, yeah, somebody my wife mentioned me a quote, people without people are not people. And uh, this book definitely demonstrates that. Yeah, great book. And what advice would you give your younger self? Be authentic. Don't care too much about what others think. And I think I, when I think back, um, I have a lot of experiences where I just worried about what people thought of me. And the same thing goes to the networking event. I was worried that people might judge me because I was too young, too new. But uh, we attract who we attract. And we build relationships with people that, uh, that are attracted to our unique qualities. So I would tell myself, just be myself, be the best of what I could be. And uh, people, whoever appreciates it, will, will, naturally, uh, will naturally be attracted to that. Amen. <laughs> so true. <laughs> you were young, right? <laughs> it is so true. I mean, 
Definitely as a leader, you want to be able to get feedback. You want to know what your what your clients are experiencing. But I do, at the heart of it all, love that saying, you know, what other people think of you is none of your business, right? That's yeah. That's their business. That's their experience of you. And if they don't, If you are being naturally being yourself and somebody doesn't like you, well, then they don't have to be your friend and they don't have to be your client because plenty of people will connect with the real you that it won't matter. Yeah, I think a lot of people, we, especially entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs, we operate a lot under fear, the fear of not having enough clients, the fear of not having enough sales. But I always try to encourage all entrepreneurs to really operate under the, with the confidence, confidence of ourselves, confidence of our offering. And things, great things will happen, and we just have to wait and see. But uh, we don't have to fear not having enough clients or not having enough sales. It will come, but we do have to be confident and truly believe in what we have to offer. And of course, I would assume that you're offering something legitimate, because if you don't have a legitimate offering, um, it'll be tough too. <laughs> Yes. Let's just at the foundationally assume if someone's in sales, they have something really good to offer. I, I just, fundamentally, I still believe that you have to have something that you're really, truly providing value. Yeah. And Melinda, share with us a success quote or a mantra and why it has meaning for you. Uh, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Yeah, I, um, it's always especially the, uh, for me, it's especially important because I am, despite the fact that I'm in sales, I'm actually naturally a private person. So a lot of times, you know, I, I do a lot of interviews and, uh, I have to think about my story and share my story with, uh, with, uh, with the audience. And naturally I get nervous, you know, being interviewed. And I remember just read at, you know, uh, about three years ago and I, st- I had my first interview and I was really nervous, but now it's a lot more, a lot easier, a lot more natural because I've done it. I've, you know, I've stepped out of my comfort zone and, uh, and now I have the freedom to say, yeah, I can be interviewed and I do not have to worry about it. The same thing goes to go getting after going after uh, big clients once you get uh, outside of comfort zone to do it, then uh, life truly begins. And lastly, Melinda, what is the best way for this community to connect with you? Um, they can visit my home, which is womenmakingbigsales.com. And also I have my Facebook where I share um, my inspirations, the challenges I face in today's sales world or uh, yeah, motivations. And uh, you can simply type in women making big sales um, in Facebook and uh, it should come up. Awesome. And for those of you, I know often you are listening to these episodes on the go. So you know you can find all the links and resources shared in this episode at womentakingthelead.com. And Melinda, thank you so much for taking the time to inspire and enlighten us. We are all better for having met you. Thank you. And I had a, I had a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. Are you ready to take the lead in your own life? Head over to womentl.com forward slash recognized to reserve your spot in my upcoming webinar on how to be recognized and rewarded for the work that you do. And to strengthen you on your leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining with me, and here's to your